I want to take you through a story about how the word misinformation is being used as a weapon to censor legitimate reporting and criticism of leaders. Last week, we discussed the fact check USA Today had placed on news stories that Joe Biden had checked his watch during a ceremony at Dover Air Force Base. The fact checker, pictured here, told the world these claims were false, fake news and misinformation. Social media companies use fact checks like this to police news um, organizations, and Facebook in particular actually purely relies on third party fact checkers to police its platforms. These fact checkers have immense power and responsibility. We have seen what happens to Sky News if someone thinks that what we have published is misinformation. It can result in suspensions or even terminations of the right to enter the town square of digital debate and discussion. In this case, Daniel Funk became the spreader of misinformation he supposedly dedicated his career to stamping out. Soon after Daniel Funk declared the watch checking claims to be false, Families of the soldiers killed during Joe Biden's botched Afghanistan exit had spoken of the heartbreak and pain of seeing their president do what Funk described as misinformation. In reference to the checking of his watch, that didn't happen just once. That happened on every single one that came out of that airplane. It happened on every single one of them. They would release the salute and he looked down at his watch on every last one, all 13. Pretty conclusive. Not to mention last week on this show, we played the raw footage of the event, which clearly supports the family's version of events. US Today eventually downgraded the claim on their fact check from partly false to missing context. Disgraceful. And what did the fact checkers say? whose tweets of the original verdict were retweeted thousands of times on social media. As many of you already know, this story has been corrected. Biden checked his watch multiple times during the ceremony. I regret my error. And when the social media pylon didn't slow down, he further hit back with this. It's easy to dunk on journalists when we get things wrong. I get it. To many, we're just another name on the screen. But behind that screen is a person trying to do their best. Ah. So you're the victim now, Daniel, not the families of dead soldiers you insinuated were lying and just a wish-washy assurance that you were trying to do your best. Your best is clearly inadequate and any power you have to police speech and news stories should be revoked immediately. The fact you haven't yet been sacked and you continue to publish fact checks discredits your entire fact checking operation. <laughs> Caleb, what do you make of the way that fact checkers over in the US are policing speech of news organisations in other countries in Australia, but then also specifically how they tend to get it wrong so very often? Well, I mean, if you can't take the heat, you've got to get out of the kitchen, don't you? And I find the whole concept of fact checkers, quote unquote, quite interesting because, I mean, isn't that what a journalist is meant to do anyway? I mean, if I put out a story that I knew was false or I hadn't done my due diligence to check the facts that I was putting forward in the story, I'm not doing my job. I don't know why we have these supposed fact checkers. I mean, th that's just what every journalist ought to be doing all of the time with anything they are publishing or saying or writing or whatever. Um, uh, and it would seem clear here that this fellow had a preconceived notion. Um, he wanted to prove, you know, falsely, of course, uh, that Biden had not been looking at his watch, uh, when, in fact, that was completely wrong. Uh, and you have to look. He's owned up to it. That's something. He's owned up to it. But time and again, what happens, uh, particularly on social media, is that someone spreads misinformation, and it's worse when it comes from a journalist, but someone spreads misinformation, that takes hold very quickly, gets lots of retweets and likes on Facebook and shares and whatever. That takes off. Everyone then believes it. Then when it is found to be wrong, they put out this meek and mild apology which no one retweets and no one shares on Facebook. And, and very few people actually realise that what they were fed in the first place was wrong. So it's all good and well to say, well, I'm sorry, it was wrong. Uh, but you've already done the damage mm. and it's very difficult to come back from that.
It's too late, isn't it? And, and Rebecca, the, the other thing that I think we always see in America, the fact checks always seem to be using semantics to uh, soften the blow on Joe Biden or using semantics to then punish a conservative opinion. Absolutely. I mean, the partisan nature, these should be called, you know, party policy checks or ideology <laughs> checks. Uh, it's been going now uh, really ever since the election and even the candidacy of uh, when uh, Donald Trump presented himself to be candidate. And uh, it's, it's just an ongoing story. So um, anything that a conservative says, it's always every possible way that you can stretch it or look at it to say that it's not true. And then when it is found to be true, as you've pointed out a number of times on the program, you know, that the police were just doing their job or whatever it is, uh, then, oh, well, let's just admit, <laughs> my goodness, we got that wrong. You know, it's And they, it's and they so can't even blatant. do that, Rebecca. And I think... They they, they, they put missing context on it after it. They can't even say, <laughs> no, this is true. And, and by the way, just, just for the record, PolitiFact has done the same fact check. They say it's true. Every single other organisation has admitted it happened. These guys have a missing context label on it. That's how ridiculous it is. <laughs> so they, can, they half apologise.